I'm here with the lovely Trish Cook. Thank you so much, Trish, for taking the time. Thank you. Um, now, I, it's hard to describe Trish because there are so many titles. Um, okay, presenter, actress, um, let's see, uh, screenwriter, uh, playwright, you write pantomimes. In fact, one of your pantomimes was the first pantomime ever up for an Olivia Award? Yes, that was um, <laughs> Cinderella in 2008. I, think. I yes. mean, so just, there's just so so much that, that you do, but um, I'm going to start with, we're in Bradford today, uh, you're, you grew up in Bradford, but where are your family originally from? My family are from a place called Dominica, not to be confused with the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Dominica is a small island between Guadeloupe and Martinique, uh, French Creole speaking, right. and um, yes, yeah, so my, my parents were born there, and then I have a big family, which mm -hmm. is, uh, I've got six sisters and three brothers, and half of them were born in Dominica, and half of us were born in England. Right, okay, and is there a big difference between your brothers and sisters that were born there, to their outlook in life, to your brothers and sisters that were born here? Yes, very much so, I would say. Um, my eldest sister's um, brother came, um, and obviously I wasn't born in Dominica, and so they came to a new family when they came over. Uh, and so they'd been left with my grandmother, who I never met. Right. My mum's mum. Right. And so they were living a completely different life, and they, they mm. kind of grow up a lot faster over there. Or they're, not that they're growing up faster, but they, they're given more chores to do. That they so more responsibility. More responsibility. Yeah. And so therefore, it becomes um, something strange when they see children over here behaving in very, I suppose, what is acceptable as being a child over here. Right. So yes, I think in the early days there was a big difference. And as we've got older, I think it's ironed out a bit, but there's still that, that very much, um, I suppose, us and them, but not, not really? in a horrible way, but it, yeah. is a, it is a different kind of culture. So therefore, it, yeah. it has been, it, it, it's, you can see it. Yes. It has to be, because when you're small, it really makes everything, you soak in everything, and you, you take that on board. Um, and I love the idea you paint this wonderful picture of this, enormous family, I mean I, I, I have one brother so the, the idea of this enormous family for me, I don't know if I'm scared or if I'm envious, um, but this wonderful picture of your dad telling stories and your mum and, and together having a great sense of humour um, and I just wonder if any of your creativity has come from them because that's quite an outlet to sit there, tell stories and entertain isn't it? It is, it has come from them I think but it wasn't like, I suppose, like Little House on the Prairie or the Waltons or anything yeah. that was just everything rosy. Um, my parents told stories not as in stories from books, mm -hmm. they told stories about what happened to them in real life and mm -hmm. people that they knew, characters that they'd met. And, right. and so for me, that was a story because yeah. all, all I was hearing was grown ups having conversations. Yeah. Uh, and, and there were times when my dad would actually tell me stories like the the proverb kind of stories or or why the agouti has 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 no tail and those kind of t tales that right. were like traditional tales right. but the ones that i i think preferred listening to were the ones that were real life characters they used to make songs they do the voices for yes. the people they knew yes i have parents like yeah. that <laughs> it's fully entertaining isn't it, it talking is. about the the relatives and things like that so when where did your love and when did your love of writing begin my love of telling stories began before I could write. Right. And I was always um, acting out stories. And uh, I used a chalkboard at one point for my, for my younger brother and nephews and nieces. And I'd draw like stick men and, and then rub that bit part of the story off and then do the, the next part of the story and, and just continue like that. So I think the story making was more of something that I, I, I just did naturally. Hmm. When I was able to write, right. then I started to write them down. But it right. was probably from maybe eight or nine that mm -hmm. I started to write things down in, in that particular way. But before that, we were just acting out and drawing and, and, and just making up stories. So now you have a, a diary, you say, at ten. Um, but then, r sadly, you lose your younger sister, who only three, wasn't she, when she passed away. Mm. And did, did that, you said you felt that you needed to sort of make sense of it. Yeah. Is that when you started to write your diary or were you writing sort of before that? Well, I, I found some old diaries just recently 
and the first page, I think it was 1972, uh, so that would have been 10, mm -hmm. and um, it's, it starts going, I can see that, as an adult, I can look back and think, okay, I was going through something at that point, so therefore mm -hmm. it was my outlet to get things out yeah. onto paper, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the poems and stories that I was writing then were about they weren't about things that were happening in my life, but they would be like about a fairy who died or, or yes. uh, you know, <laughs> right. there was more death in there. Um, and so I was working things out in a way that I didn't realise that was my therapy. Yeah, okay. Um, and so it, was, it wasn't writing for anybody else's eyes or for anybody else to hear those stories. It was just mm -hmm. me getting out of my system mm -hmm. what was in my head. Right. And how did that change the dynamics of the family when your sister passed? It changed it a lot because my mum suffered and as a child you don't realise what your parents are going through. You don't mm -hmm. realise what they're going through. You just think they're a bit um, miserable or they're just um, yeah. be, being uh, upset about something. And you, you can't get to the bottom of it even though you're going through your own grief as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that it, it made a big impact on every one of us. In different ways. Um, my sister, who is the one just above me, three years above me, my baby sister died in her arms and so that was like a massive thing. I just remember it happening and so it wasn't uh, uh, a, an experience that you would expect to go through at a young age. No. Uh, I remember my friend calling for me to go to, to a birthday party and my sister had just died the, the day before oh. and I was no, her brother came to the house and, and I remember me saying, oh, I can't come to, <laughs> can't come to your party because my sister's died. And it was a matter of fact thing. Yeah. But it was processing. Somewhere, uh, Somewhere, it? yes. Mm -hmm. So it was um, really, yeah, it was a strange time. As an adult, you can look back on those times yeah. and put those pieces together. But as a child, you just get on with things mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in, in a way that you, you, in the way you can. Yeah. yeah, okay. So when you wanted to go into just then changing it on a, on a bit of a lighter note. When you decided, right, this is the path I'm going down, did your parents take you seriously? <laughs> yeah, you see, because I was like the third from the youngest, Right. they'd been through a lot been. of children. <laughs> and so by the time it got to me, I think I got the, the easier deal. Right. They were very much uh, uh, a lot, they listened a lot more than they probably yeah, yeah. did with the older children. And so when I said what I wanted, they said, okay, right. <laughs> um, if that's what you... Although my dad always wanted me to be a lawyer or, or, or a doctor, as they do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it became... They knew me enough to know that I was doing things that I enjoyed and most of the right. things that I enjoyed worked. And I was doing well at school and I was doing all the things that I was meant to be doing. I was quite a good kid. Right, you know, and, and they've probably heard it all from, from all your siblings ahead of you, haven't they? Yeah. Every dream, every fantasy or whatever it is that people want to do, they've heard it all and people are more relaxed. When, when, when they, the yeah, children yeah. get younger, they're much more relaxed because they, they've been through it, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, you know, it's, so, yeah. So for those of you that may not know this, um, I'm old enough to know that uh, and remember that when you wanted to go into the profession, uh, you wanted your equity card, which was your union card, and everybody at that time wanted their equity card if they wanted to work professionally. You had to get, was it 52 weeks? You had to get work that added up to 52 weeks. Okay, I, like I can't remember the exact amount of, right. of, of weeks, but I know I when I did mine, I worked as a stage manager with uh, Black Theatre Co-op and I did two shows back to back so it's probably the same sort of thing wasn't yes, it yes yeah, it's about Be six months work I think it was right yeah. because I, I think I was a was I a magician's assistant no 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 I was a, <laughs> at that time I've done many jobs many jobs no I was a, I was a dancer abroad um, so but then you moved on to London didn't you yes and, and that's right. where well that's where I got my stage management um, work right um, I just finished um, my performing arts degree at Ilkley College in Leeds uh, um, polytechnic and then I wanted to, to, to find work within the industry so I, I worked for a little while in Bradford at um, West Indian Centre just coordinating the performing arts and getting lots of different uh, drama, um, music, bands. Did you enjoy that? I loved it, absolutely right. loved it and it was during that time that the Black Theatre Co-op, I got the Black Theatre Co-op to come up to Bradford to, right. to do their, their, their show and it was the, the Tooth of Crime, I think the show was called. 
and their stage manager at the time wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing well enough and so I was helping along and Did you step in? I kind of stepped in because I'd mm. done a little bit of stage management at, at college and so I was just basically helping to wash the, 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 the stuff they'd been wearing just stick them on radio. Oh those top jobs, we've all done those lovely top jobs. jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Getting them dried before the evening performance. Right. Um, and then it was Charlie Hansen who is amazing, he's doing a lot of producing now. Um, on TV, he works with Ricky Gervais a lot now. Oh, right. And um, and he was the, the um, director of that show, and right. so he said um, you should do stage management. And I thought, oh yeah, I'd love to do that. I need my equity card anyway. Yeah. That. Do you have anything going there? So he said, oh, we might have. And I thought, yeah, whatever. Mm. And then they got in touch with me and said, um, oh, there's a job going. Would you like to have it? And so right. then I had to think, oh no, I'm going to be leaving Bradford and I'm mm. going to move into the big. London, London. Um, but my sister lived there and so she said I could stay there right. for as long as I needed to mm -hmm. and so I went and got the job and I kind of blocked my way through it a lot of the time because I was a, the assistant stage manager right. um, but I had to drive this big van in London and I'd only passed my test here in a little um, Ford Cortina and it was very, it was quite scary getting to the Elephant and Castle right. and I remember oh, and, and if you've ever been to the Elephant and Castle and that roundabout, and that it's, roundabout it's where, worse now. Oh, it's like Brands Hatch <laughs> on speed. Is it, it is though isn't it? Yeah. It's terrifying. So you were driving in a big van. A big van. A, a woman in a big van. In a big van. <laughs> And Charlie said, it's okay, I'll go with you, and, you know, because they had to pick up something from some store, right. store place. And got to Elephant Castle, and I was like <laughs> sitting there thinking, shall I come out now? Shall I come out? That's shall it. I come out? And I just kind of charged I remember out. You. I remember you. Charged <laughs> out, and I just remember looking at his face, and he just went... <laughs> Panic. Put your foot down and just close your eyes. And then I had some lessons after that with um, Mal Malcolm Frederick, who was working with the company then as All well. Right. Not rest in soul. <laughs> rest in peace, Paul. Anyway, he's... oh no. <laughs> so you've moved. So you moved from there. You're you're now a woman that's having driving lessons to get you around the Elephant and Castle roundabout. And, oh. uh, so where, so where, how did you get from that to presenting on uh, the BBC Play Days? Well. <laughs> They, um, what happened was, I'd, I'd always been writing, right. my, but not showing anybody the things that I was writing to begin with. Right. And um, I'd always wanted to perform, and I'd been watching play school a uh, lot, and yes. having a look at the names of the people who come, came down, the directors. And I got yeah. in touch with Penny Lloyd, who was one of the directors on one of the episodes that I'd watched right. and I sent a letter there and they said um, I got a letter back which I was quite surprised now that to get a letter that back. is rare that is rare but when I did mm. what the letter said was that um, we'll keep you on file well right. well you think well are they going to keep me on file or does that mean the file is in the bin yeah with the others yeah exactly mm -hmm. But they did, and um, they got in touch not long after, and um, and said that um, they would be making a new program with Cynthia Felgate, and that they would um, like me to come to an audition. And right. so I went along to an audition, and what I did in the audition was because my book, uh, my first book, hadn't come out yet, but I'd got the proofs, and so I thought, well, I'll read some of that. Right. But actually, I, no, I won't read it. I'll, I'll learn it which is quite difficult to learn a bit right. and act it out and perform it and so that's what I did as part of the audition and it was quite um, that would have been very different different it? very yeah. different to what they'd seen particularly because the characters that I'd written about had uh, Caribbean dialect mm -hmm. and I was having fun playing those characters and doing those voices and it actually worked really well in the audition right so um, how long between the audition and here in the you got it. It was a white. Well, first of all, I had to do the audition twice because Cynthia wasn't in the room. Right. So they said, "Oh, could you do it all again?" So mm -hmm. I'd, I'd had to sing a song, um, um, and do the the, the character, right. and then I did that story piece. And then I thought, after I'd finished doing the audition, I thought, "Well, that's it. Don't have to do it again." Yeah. And then they said, "Oh, could you do it all again?" And then I thought, "Oh no, what, what happens if I don't do it?" Well, as do good? they not understand that you ge <laughs> you gear up? For it, you spend all that time, and then the relief when it's over. It goes out of your just say, "Can you do it again?" It's like that could be the best it could. Yeah. So you had to go back. And so do it I did again. it all again, and then she liked it. Right. And then um, I got called back, um, and then I think they called me back again after that as well. And then 
I got the, um, the, I think it was a letter, was it a letter of call? I can't remember. I remember getting a letter afterwards, so they must have called first and said that I'd got the job and so... Oh, how did it, that feel? It was a life changer. Yeah. It really was a life changer because it meant that I could do what I loved. Mm -hmm. It meant that somebody actually valued what I was doing and, and they thought it was good too. Yeah. Um, the book was coming out as well, so little things were starting to, to come together. What year was that then? So that was 1988. So then, really, everything seemed to be merging very nicely, bobbing away then. So yes. you've got your book, you, you're on the BBC. I mean, what does that do for your confidence? Because in the creative profession, it's so tough to keep yourself up when you're not working or when people aren't listening to you or, or reading your books or you know giving you a job how did it feel to suddenly go into a position where actually your books are almost ready you're on tv i mean did it go to your head i don't think i don't think it did <laughs> it because didn't. i think i was excited right and i was loving it right but i was also being quite realistic and thinking oh it might not last because especially with play days they give you a two week contract and then two you, weeks two weeks and then you don't know if you're going to get more work from that or not right and so it was a matter of um taking it all in your stride really yes. and i remember at the time i was also very broody and oh. i and i wanted my sister um had her, her son and um and i was like looking babies in buggies and mm. i was really feeling i feel this is the time that I want to have a child now and so it, if I'd have been thinking about work 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 I don't think I'd have even entertained that idea at that point right and I didn't know that they would employ me again and so I ah. just we went for it right. and then we got I got pregnant they went for it we went for it right <laughs> I got pregnant and then suddenly started to think um, oh they've asked me back what happens if they don't want me because now I've got a child ah. but then it did actually work in my favour because obviously it was a preschool program and so the more you yeah. knew about children and babies that the, the actually it was better right. for you so right. then they did employ me again and they did employ me again and they did employ me again so it, it worked out but I don't think I was thinking in in a mm. in a work way so it mm. can't have gone to my head it that can't much. can it no. you, you never once said um you know, don't you know who I am? You never said that, no? I've you said were... that at home. <laughs> but that but nobody times cares at home. <laughs> at home, that's the thing, yeah. So you've got a small child and you're on TV. Now, um, for, for those of you, and there will be a lot of you out there who uh, watch Play Days, um, what was the Wirebird really like? Did the Wirebird, I mean, look difficult to me? Did they have a, a, did their own dressing room? Uh, their own agent? <laughs> uh, how was that, working with a puppet? Oh! Uh, the puppet was, was fine, Ellie was fine. It's just the actors. <laughs> <laughs> they were fine. It was, um, we had a good laugh to be honest and, yeah. and it was weird having people under the table with their arm up puppet and, and wow. talking to the puppet. And, yeah. um, oh, but, I forgot about the person under the table <laughs> with the arm up the... Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Did they ever get any uh, sort of mention or any... I think they got credit at the credit end. Credit at perhaps, the end, yeah. yeah. But, it, but to be honest, I preferred being seen than not seen. Yeah. For all the hard work that they had to do, the positions yeah. they had to put themselves in, their arms were all oh, in mm. so many different mm. positions and things, and they must have been aching now, years later. Oh, uh, yes. But um, it was fun. It was a really good time. I, it was really so good. I got to ask you this. Who was your favourite, favourite actor <laughs> on the show? My favourite actor. Oh, who could that be? Oh, 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 I wonder. Hello. Hello. Oh, may, 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 have been, may have been Ricky. Ricky Diamond, perhaps. You see, well, does yeah. that make you happy now? I'm very happy now, thank you very much. A little bit of recognition and now we can go back to chatting. But I didn't know that the puppets weren't real. That's my only query. Well, there, there we go. I'm so sorry. There's a man under a table with a hat. I'm not even going to tell you where he put his hand because it would just be too much. <laughs> Although, you know, once I met, um, you remember Bodger and Badger, the BBC? Yes, yes. <gasps> well, I met Badger and I was a grown woman and I, I met the Badger and um, I was so excited about meeting the puppet because I'd watched them for years. I got a bit carried away and my first thing I said when I met them, I said, 
can I put my um, hand up, up Badger's bottom? I just suddenly felt like I had the need because I've been watching him on the... Anyway, I digress, I digress. But what was it like for your son? What was it like for Kieran to watch his mum on TV? It was great. I mean, he was actually in the programme a couple of times. So, yeah, when I was... Um, he was about four, four, four or five months and right. I brought him on the programme and I went on to the Wybird stop then. That was before I did the Wybird stop when we right. used to do the tent stop. Mm. And I'd just had him and, I, and I'd written a little story in, a, in part of the script and, and um, told the story and then he was there as well and his eyes were just so gorgeous and I've got that. Oh. I've got that. And then he came on again, I think he was about um, five, four, right. six. And again, it was a script that he asked me to do right. and he's come on as the little boy in that script oh, and done that. Fantastic. And he, he, he started to do, he was very shy, right. but yet he started to, to do little things like that. And then there was a radio script that I'd written and because he, it was called um, Single Plus One and it was about a single mum right. and, and a son that wanted to um, find a, a husband or, or, or a man for, for his mum. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so he's trying to match make and stuff. Um, and so as I was writing it, I was kind of thinking him and and, and so when he said that he wanted to, to, to do the part, I thought, oh, do you, do you really? You know, you're a bit quiet, you're a bit shy. He says, yeah, yeah, mum, I'd like to do it. And so I said, well, you have to audition, and he auditioned. Right. And he got, well, and he he got had the to audition. He had to audition because. Oh, she's harsh. She's no, harsh. because they didn't know. I didn't know he could do it. Right. And then I just remember on the on the day when we were um, recording it, it was for radio. When we were recording it, his line was the first line, and there was this mm. silence. You nervous? I was so it, nervous. Yeah. It was really, really quiet, and I thought, is he going to say anything? This is the first day of rehearsal. What if he doesn't say anything today? Oh. And it was just like a hush, and then suddenly he spoke, and I thought. We got it, and then he did, and he did such a great job as well. Oh. So he's. Um, did he continue on? No, no, <laughs> that was one and only. Right, but okay. you know, it was just that the part was his, really. Yeah. And he, he knew the character, I guess, oh, and he, and he did it. But, but no, he's he's um, he's quite shy. He's though. moved on to different areas now. Yeah, he does. Um, he was he did digital animation at uni, but then um, right. graphic design is his work at the moment. Yeah. So he's creative as well, isn't he? Yeah. So you did quite a long time on, on Playlist. You went to the end, didn't you? I did, oh, so it was... Cool. She went to the end. I went to the end, Ricky. Yeah. Do you remember that letter you got? <laughs> yeah. It was harsh. Do you think it was anything to do with losing your hair? Could have been. It oh. could have been. Oh. Lack of talent. Lack of talent, yes. <laughs> yes. So by this time, or even though that you're filming, and, and that was quite a few years, was it eight, nine years you were on? I think eight. Eight years um, on. For, I think 88 to 96. Right. So were you writing throughout this time as well, writing I your was. books? I was. And I, mean, I wrote a few episodes for Playdays as well. Right. Maybe. Um, and the books, at the same time, everything, like I said, took off. I had mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 my baby, I had books, and then scripts started to be um, recognised. Right. Um, and so, what was the question? <laughs> 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 I might have bored her into submission, <laughs> but I'm going to keep going anyway. I'm not going to stop. Mm. Did you write? <laughs> what did I ask? <laughs>